feels like it's been weeks since I've been at the lathe. What I made a bunch of last time I was down here is candle holders. Uh, I did it on the cheap, inch and a half Forstner bit. Well, it was an inch and a half for the candle. Anyway, they're ugly. The hole in the bottom from the brad on the Forstner bit. Ditto up here, although you don't see this one because of the candle. But uh, on the whole, they're kind of nice looking little things. So, I'm going to make more nicer. Let me see, I think that's the same. Yeah, inch and a half. But this time, I'm going to drill a hole for the top, but not this deep. Drill a hole on the drill press for the top, put it in here, turn the bottom to 72 millimeters. Insert that in a chuck and do this in. Might start with the Forstner bit. Probably not. I'll just use a straight in scraper after this is when I'm ready to dig this hole. Having the scraper straight in and I won't have this hole in the bottom. Be a whole lot nicer. Okay, and now I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these. Roughly this diameter or a little smaller. Now, holes for this. I don't have to be very deep, just get through the bark and into good wood. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've been away from the lathe for a while. Seem to have suffered a brain dump in that time. Here I am committing a cardinal woodturner sin, turning cross grain with a spindle roughing gouge. Not supposed to do that. It's dangerous. Down just a little. As the diameter decreases, the lower the tool rest to compensate. Still using the spindle roughing gouge, a fragile tool that can snap in a catch. That catch woke me up. Three quarter inch bolt, yeah. No danger of this tool breaking. It seems I forgot to lock the quill. And I need to expand the chuck jaws a little bit tighter. This holly is extremely dry. Tailstock support on this small piece may be overkill, but better overkill than underkill. This caliper is blunt. I'm not marking for the foot. I'm just checking to see roughly how much wood I need to remove. I should have checked diameter 
as I cut. It's too small, but I have to come up farther to get rid of the bark on the outside anyway. With the blunt tips on this caliper, I could check this with the wood spinning, but I'm not quite brave enough. Not yet. Okay, now I'll try it, but I'm off to the side, out of the line of fire. I'm looking for the Goldilocks diameter. Too big, and the corner of the jaws will leave marks. Too small, they might not hold it tight enough, if at all. Now that the foot is the correct diameter, I can go about shaping the piece. For a smooth finish cut, you need to go uphill on cross grain. But for just removing material, it doesn't much matter. I'll use a rounded scraper to take the tool marks off this concave surface. I'm satisfied with the surface now. But I'm not satisfied with my dust mask. The filter seems clogged. I need to change it. But not right now. 15, 20. Having bowl down. I make the base ever so slightly concave. Well, that's almost dead flat. I want to get flat. that. Sand this one and put on the next one. I first sand in reverse to stand up and cut off the grain that was flattened by the tools.
I hand sand after each grit to get rid of concentric scratches. The pith in this piece of holly is very soft. I dig out the punk with a tiny screwdriver from both sides. I finished a few of these with Axe Abrasive Paste and Axe Wax, but the last ones I did with Wipe On Poly, two coats of that gave a nice, durable finish. The only problem with making this base 72 millimeters instead of around 60, which is what I would like, is it looks a bit bottom heavy. Could have gone in more. Pay more attention to form on the next one. Just the abrasive paste leaves a pretty enough shine on it, but wax it anyway. That's done. Now we'll turn it around. And that will leave no marks. Put that on there. And uh, turn out the inside. Again, I will not be using the, uh, the Forstner bit beyond this. That's my starter. I'll use a square half inch, um, what do you call those things, scraper for the rest of this hole. And then I'll hollow this out and make that more bowl like. Uh, so I'm going to turn the camera off now while I do the rest of these. And then come back when I start turning the inside. This is the number seven of the batch. Let's look at that again. I caught it in the air with my left hand. The mortise was too shallow and I was too aggressive with the cut. Okay, deep in the mortise. Two of the eight were too small to begin with to get a 72 inch base, so I recalculated from my next size down. Here we are, 55. Right there is 55. Turning a base this small makes it look top heavy, unbalanced, and it probably is. I would not use this one with a real candle.
what I'll do here is just hollow this out. I think this mark's staying on. If it does, it'll be the only one. Thirteen hundred. Having spindle gouge. Come in a little more. So I don't even make my hole deeper now. A pretty nice bark on. I'm gonna leave it on. And about twice as deep. Well, so much for bark. At least this way they'll all be the same. I finished the inside of it with Dr. Kirk's Scratch Free. It's an easy to wipe on, wipe off combination abrasive and wax. You don't need a lot of speed, you don't need heat, and it makes a pretty nice finish.
there it is. Unmarked foot. 72 millimeters. I try to buff that a little more after it dries, but there's one. And here's another one. This is the one that flew off the lathe after this chipped out, so this is going to look a little odd. You could do this with a square uh, carbide too. 1300. but that's all right, a little too shallow. It was difficult to get a smooth cut with a spindle gouge because half the time the bevel was riding on air and it developed a bounce. So I finished this one up with a rounded scraper, which required more sanding. These round bowl sanders from King Arthur Tools work pretty well here. Pretty well. They hang up on sharp edges though. I use a wire brush to clean up the remnants of the bark. Some of the bark on the next one fell off. The rest of it had to be pried off with a chisel. And so the afternoon went until all eight in this batch were finished. Six of them with a 72 millimeter base and two with a 55. So I have six of these. Compare these to the original. These have the mortise with the brad point hole obscuring my logo. These have smooth bottoms. And same in the top. So, I like my new way better. Seems we just got over the winter holidays, and here they are again. I need to get busy and turn out a lot more of these, put them on my Etsy shop, before the holiday season is over. Thanks for watching.